What is Olympia Looping? Olympia Looping is a steel roller coaster probably located somewhere in Europe right now. The ride is a traveling coaster, meaning it tours various amusement parks, fun fairs, and other events throughout the continent of Europe. But what makes Olympia Looping special is that it's the world's largest traveling roller coaster, requiring roughly 50 shipping containers to transport it across countries. These containers hold all of the ride's track, supports, and trains, including arguably the most notable part of the roller coaster, its record breaking five vertical loops. In fact, Olympia Looping's entire history can be traced back to the debut of the modern day looping roller coaster. In 1976, Sporchkov, the roller coaster manufacturer that would go on to build Olympia Looping, introduced the world's first vertical loop on a modern day steel roller coaster with the debut of the Great American Revolution at Six Flags Magic Mountain. Loops had been attempted prior to this on the centrifugal railways of the past, but to little success. The perfect circle shape of the loop caused it to be too intense for riders, leading to its demise. Fortunately, Sforchkov's design didn't meet the same fate. The success of the modern looping roller coaster saw its interest rise, sparking other companies to do the same. In the same year as the debut of the Great American Revolution, Aerodynamics, another roller coaster manufacturer, engineered their own version of the vertical loop with the development of Corkscrew at Cedar Point. From this point on, Sporchkov and Arrow were locked in competition. Both pushed the idea of looping rides, making them taller, faster, and with more inversions. In 1977, both companies debuted their own shuttle coaster to the industry, a form of ride which saw guests complete a vertical loop both forwards and backwards. But it was 1978 when the first step towards the construction of Olympia looping occurred. That year, Schwarzkopf worked with Oskar Bruch and Fritz Kinsler to bring the first portable looping roller coaster, Looping Star, to the fairgrounds of Europe. Like Olympia looping, Looping Star could be moved from park to park, being disassembled and reassembled with ease. A year after this, Schwarzkopf built Mindbender at Six Flags Over Georgia, the first roller coaster to feature two separate vertical loops. Though, after the success of the first portable looping coaster, Oscar was looking for something bigger. This led to the debut of Doppel Looping in 1981, the world's first traveling roller coaster to feature two vertical loops. The portable looping coaster was a hit, which only caused other businessmen to get involved. Schwarzkopf worked with Rudolf Barth, a famous German showman, to debut Dryer Looping in 1984. Dryer Looping traveled the German fair circuit as the first roller coaster ever with three vertical loops, but this only sparked more competition. Bruch saw Dryer Looping and wanted a new roller coaster to compete. He requested Schwarzkopf produce another record breaking roller coaster, this time with four vertical loops, and in 1986, Thriller premiered at German fairgrounds. However, during the fabrication phase of Thriller, Schwarzkopf went bankrupt. Fierce competition from Aerodynamics and other amusement manufacturers eventually led to the company's demise. Though fortunately for Rudolf Barth, that didn't mark the end of the competition. Rudolf had already contacted Schwarzkopf about constructing another record-breaking ride only a year after the debut of Dryer Looping back in 1985. Bath wanted a roller coaster with no less than five inversions, which would not only be the most inversions on a traveling roller coaster, but also the most inversions on any roller coaster in Germany. To accomplish this, Werner Sengel and Anton Sporchkopf of Sporchkopf designed a coaster similar to Dryer Looping, but with five vertical loops as opposed to three. During the design phase, the record-breaking ride was known as Funfa Looping, five looping. This continued the naming scheme of Doppel Looping, Double Looping, and Dryer Looping, Triple Looping the years prior. Though, the ride wouldn't go on to be named Funfa Looping, but Olympia Looping instead. When designing the ride, the five vertical loops were positioned and colored in a way that represented the logo of the Olympic Games, giving the ride its loose theme and name. But, as Schwarzkopf went bankrupt, who went on to build the ride for Rudolf Bath? The manufacturing of the attraction was handed over to Bayer Ruschahutenstahl, known as BHS, a company that had worked with Schwarzkopf in the past. BHS also went on to contribute towards other unfinished Schwarzkopf projects too, including Leesburg Banan at Leesburg and Jetline at Groenland. On top of this, after its liquidation, Anton Schwarzkopf founded a small design company. This firm worked alongside BHS to supply components for the ride, such as the trains, track design, and lift mechanism. 
Interestingly, during the design phase, the companies involved with the construction of the ride corrected an issue found on previous Schwarzkopf traveling roller coasters. It was discovered that rides like Dryer Looping and Thriller featured far more right turns than left turns, leading to excessive wear to one side of the train's chassis. To resolve this, Olympia's layout was designed to incorporate more variations in turns, reducing the uneven wear. Four years after the ride's conception, and thanks to the hard work of many, Olympia Looping officially debuted at Oktoberfest in Munich, Germany on the 17th of September 1989. Fortunately, it was a great success then and continues to be a great success now. Since its debut, the ride has toured countless fairgrounds, amusement parks and other events, being host to millions of riders in total. Today, it usually makes annual visits to several places, such as its birthplace, Oktoberfest, the world's largest beer festival and traveling fun fair, Wiener Prater, an amusement park in Vienna, and Hyde Park's Winter Wonderland, one of London's largest Christmas events. But what makes Olympia Looping so successful? Arguably, it's the ride experience. Guests begin their journey by boarding one of the attraction's five trains. The trains usually consist of five or seven cars depending on the location and capacity requirements. Each car seats guests in two rows of two, leading to a maximum of 28 riders per train. Once boarded, guests pull down their lap bar and shoulder restraints and begin their ride. The trains immediately begin climbing up the curved tire lift hill, ascending 32.5 meters, 107 feet high. Without much warning, guests crest the top of the twisted drop and quickly plummet down the first ascent. The cars dive 30 meters, 99 feet towards the ground at the maximum vertical angle of 60 degrees. It's here that riders reach the top speed of approximately 84 kilometers per hour, 52 miles per hour, and enter the first of the five inversions. Guests plow through vertical loop number one, measuring 25 meters, 82 foot tall at its highest point. They then whip to the left, complete a downward 180 degree turn, and enter the next two inversions. Riders fly through vertical loops number 2 and 3, which both stand 19 meters, 62 feet tall. After, the trains ascend a left-hand climb and pass into a blocked brake. Guests then head back towards the ground, complete a long drop to the right, and enter the final two inversions. The trains speed through the 4th and 5th vertical loops, both of which stand 14 meters, 46 feet tall at the front of the ride. Riders then climb up into a second block break before completing a 540 degree downward right hand helix. The ride comes to an end with a bank turn to the left, an upward bank turn to the right and a small dip, all of which leads visitors into the final break run. During the entire 70 second ride experience, guests navigate a total of 1,250 meters, 4,101 feet of track. Once it's been transported to a new location, all of this track takes roughly a week to assemble with 10 workers. When fully constructed, Olympia Looping can be a real money maker. As of 2019, a single ride on the five looping roller coaster costs nine Great British pounds at Winter Wonderland and 10 euros at Oktoberfest. With all five trains running, a maximum of 3,000 guests can ride in a single hour, equating to £27,000 every 60 minutes. Despite the high price per ride, millions are willing to pay each year. Most want to experience the world's largest traveling roller coaster and its impressive vertical loops. While others appreciate the ride for its forceful layout, which at its most intense subjects guests to 5.2 Gs of force, Nevertheless, it's impressive that after over 30 years of operation, Olympia Looping remains both intact and beautifully smooth. Have you ridden this portable roller coaster? And if so, where was it located at the time? Regardless, thank you for watching, and we'll see you all next time. If you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing and pressing the bell icon below.